My name is Ellen Solid. This project began with conversations with Professor Stephen Nesheba of the University of Puget Sound, whose area of study is ice clouds. We explored a variety of opportunities for collaboration, including making panorama images of clouds, 3D images, and the like. At one point, he introduced me to the work of his colleague, Stephen Warren, at the University of Washington. Warren had spent several months in Antarctica studying the typology of ice crystals. I was immediately taken by the images that he showed me. Steve Nesheba brokered a conversation with Steve Warren. The result, his enthusiastic willingness to allow me to use his source images as the basis of my work, field study, ice crystals of Antarctica. Here's Steve Warren talking about his own process. I spent the year of 1992 in Antarctica at the South Pole Station. Blizzard of the winter came in March, causing blowing and drifting snow. So every day when I went out to work for two hours at the clean air facility, I would set the microscope slide up on top of a box on the roof. And then two hours later, when I was ready to go back into the dome, I brought the slide with me and looked at it under the microscope. I was often astonished by the beauty of those microscopic crystals. It was totally unexpected because without the microscope, all you see when you're outside is some sparkling in the moonlight. And you have no clue about the wondrous crystal shapes that may be responsible for the sparkling. As soon as I saw Steve's images, I was struck that the way to depict them was through the cyanotype process. Here you can see the source image juxtaposed to the resulting cyanotype. I like the parallels of the blue of the cyanotype and the blue we associate with water and the fact that ice is made of water. Like the ice crystals themselves, which are ephemeral, cyanotypes are somewhat fugitive to light and the transformative process of making them seemed in keeping with the depiction of such fleeting elements as ice. I liked the feeling that I was conducting a scientific experiment. I selected 28 source images from Steve's 108, modified them by removing the gridded background, enhancing the contrast, and making digital negatives. After applying a light-sensitive solution and exposing it to the sun, the image was revealed when washed in water. As Steve mentioned, he was surprised by what he saw under the microscope. Likewise, each cyanotape is unique, giving me an element of surprise with each one. I wanted the finished work to feel referential to a scientific study without being a literal translation. Rather than making a traditional book, I chose to make a work composed of a portfolio containing 14 double-sided images, each in a handmade glassine sleeve, accompanied by a booklet of quote-unquote field notes. The glassine sleeves are referential to how laboratory slides or specimens might be stored. The front of each folio depicts details at a higher magnification and retains the circular reference to the microscope. The back displays crystals at a lower magnification, representing a field of crystals of different types. The field note booklet parodies a composition book in its style and contains both my commentary and notes and drawings of the scientists along with an abstract describing their original study. My collaboration with the scientists took me to terrain I had not explored before and provided a unique opportunity to work directly with scientific source material. It also confirmed my suspicion that artists and scientists have much in common as both are often exploring previously uncharted territory.